Hey, how's it going, everybody? Ryan Gass here, PTP, and you're going to notice that a lot more going forward, I'm going to be concealed carrying. And a part of the reason for that is because in the past, I have predominantly openly carried. I'm going to be carrying concealed a lot more, especially on video going forward, because I'm going to be getting more practice in concealed carrying. Why? Well, because our Maryland legislators have done a lot of things this year, including but not limited to banned open carry. Yes, that's right. Open carry of a handgun specifically uh, is now going to be illegal after October 1 of this year. Uh, open carry of a long gun is still uh, going to be legal, and we're going to be exercising that right a lot more going forward too. But I want to start concealed carrying a lot more to get in the practice of that, uh, one, for my own good, but also, two, so I can better uh, advise you all on ways to be discreet, ways to be concealed, so that you don't get hemmed up by a law enforcement officer that is being overly uh, ambitious about his job that day. Now, today, I'm carrying the holster that I've been using for the last several months. It is the Tier 1 Concealment. Axis Elite for my Sig Sauer 365 X Macro with a TLR7 attached. It also keeps an extra magazine, uh, which I actually just picked up a couple out, and I think I was in Kentucky uh, last couple days, and I picked up uh, actually four of these. These are extremely hard to find, and I was going to find four of them, and I picked up every single one, not because I, uh, I'm going to be stashing them away and uh, be you know selling them for high prices, but no, I'm going to be using this gun a lot more this year going forward, both for carry, but also obviously because I'm carrying it, I'm going to be training a lot more with it, so I'm going to need extra magazines for those long days on the range. Now I want to go ahead and show you not only what I'm carrying and what I'm carrying in, but how I'm carrying it. So you saw the shirt I have before, I'll go ahead and put it on here in a little bit, but this is what I have underneath. I put a nice uh, uh, comfortable shirt underneath and I have it tucked in because it makes it a lot more comfortable for having this inside the waistband holster. Let me show you what I mean. Having this shirt tucked in between the gun, the holster, and my body, it allows it to be a lot more smoother and a lot more comfortable when it's pressing against my body. Sometimes, especially with these textured grips, like you see on some of the Smith & Wesson MMP shields, as well as, uh, this isn't as bad, but on the 55s, they have some textured grip as well. Uh, that can irritate your skin when you're walking around carrying it and it's moving inside of your waistband. So having that shirt there kind of helps to have a protective barrier a little bit. And now eventually this is going to wear holes into my shirts. I have several shirts that have, I have holes, well not to be small holes, but holes worn into the shirt. And this is the cost of being uh, in business. So uh, this is how I'm going to be carrying a lot more going forward, especially because this is something I can do during the spring and summer, but also in the fall and winter. All right, now let me go ahead and put on my cover garment. Now, as you see, not buttoned up, it's not that concealed. It's not that discreet, right? Uh, well, some people maybe not notice it. Yeah, absolutely. But this is not going to be uh, acceptable under Maryland's new laws coming forward. That's going to go in effect October 1 of 2013. So I'm going to go and take the extra step of button it up as well. Now, you heard me refer to this as a cover garment. Simply put, it's a garment that is covering my gun. It's helping it be more concealed, uh, and this is just the way I prefer to carry uh, concealed. A lot of times it's a button-up shirt over top of the firearm, which the firearm's got a shirt in between the two. Uh, so obviously during the fall and winter, I may instead have a hoodie on top uh, and or a jacket. All right, but this is just uh, us going into the springtime. It is now the, what is it, the 16th of April. It's going to get warmer and warmer, hotter and hotter. Uh, and uh, I like to wear, uh, going into spring and summer, I want to wear this, uh, I want to wear shirts like this that have uh, obviously no sleeves other than the regular short sleeve. Uh, and then a relatively light in, in uh, how they wear. Now, while I am wearing pants currently, 
this can be accomplished also while wearing shorts. Uh, yep, I am one of those, you know, young dads in my early 30s, and I wear cargo shorts. Yep, it makes it very easy to be able to wear very similar clothing, but wear it year round, right? Uh, right now, I'm wearing pants with a short sleeve uh, cover garment. In the actual winter, I can have a long sleeve cover garment with pants. During the uh, summer, I can have, you know, what I have right now, short sleeve cover garment with shorts. It is allowing me to, to carry both ways. Now, obviously, uh, if I'm going to be carrying in shorts during the uh, spring and summer, I'd say, uh, it'll, it'll work for a inside the wind, uh, waistband appendix carry type holster. Obviously, it's not going to work for a ankle holster. Now, this shirt isn't extra large. It is, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't it goes as far as saying form fitting, but this is definitely uh, a shirt that fits me, right? Uh, it's not super loose, it's not super tight, but with how tight it is, uh, depending on how I'm angled, what I'm doing, right? It may not uh, be as discreet as it is right now here, me standing here right now filming this YouTube video. So those are things you gotta consider too, depending on what you're doing. While standing in the driveway, I can be discreet and concealed. I may not be as concealed when I'm doing activities. Right? When I'm moving around, when I'm doing this, when I'm doing that, I may I have to consider that while I'm doing these activities. I have to be extra aware of that. So I just want to show a little bit of the draw, right? Because there are people out there that have never penning style uh, carried their firearm, and they don't understand how it's done or how it's done safely. They don't understand the concept. So I want to show you that a little bit. Obviously, I'm keeping my finger straight on the trigger the entire time. I'm pulling the firearm up out of that uh, holster, and right, I'm tilting it towards, I'm tilting the, the top of the frame out towards my, uh, away from my body. I'm tilting the gun, the muzzle up, all right, and then I'm pressing the gun out. Obviously, we go this more in depth in our classes, but I just wanted to go do a 5,000 foot uh, explanation of that. And yes, I do make a uh, mistake sometimes when I'm drawing a reholster in. And I didn't edit that out of here because I, I want you to see those mistakes. I want to see those mistakes because I can go back and review them and, and not make those mistakes again. The best way to critique yourself in your draw is to videotape yourself doing just that and watch it. See what you're doing. See what you're not. Oh, look, I, I screwed up a little bit on my uh, tactical reload. Hey, it happens. That's why you hate to practice. Now here's it going at normal speed from an above uh, angle kind of. So you can see a little better down into the holster and see how it keeps its shape. Notice how it keeps its shape. It That makes it so easy all right, to be able to safely get that firearm in and out of the holster. All right? If it was like a leather holster and it collapses every time you pull the firearm out, then you got to take and shove your fingers in there, separate the, the, the walls of that holster, shove that firearm in there, all while you're probably muzzling your fingers, which you don't want to do. Now, things that I have noticed with my tier one concealment holster, let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, so, things that make it less comfortable. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I misplaced, for whatever reason, I misplaced a second magazine. So, by not having that extra girth coming out of it, just that little part of that holster was sticking into my body pretty damn bad. Um, and it was really annoying. It really was. So uh, once I was able to get the extra magazine in there, get it loaded up, put that inside there, that helped alleviate some of the pressure of this, that small piece of that holster poking into me. And instead, I have now uh, the whole magazine, uh, uh, I guess, uh, spreading out that, uh, that pressure along a larger uh, base. So... Uh, definitely you don't want to carry this without an extra magazine as it has uh, set up for. Also, it's a pain in the butt to go to the bathroom, uh, to be quite honest. Right? Essentially, uh, if you uh, want to go piss, you have to go to the stall uh, because to be able to, I haven't found a great way yet at least, and if anybody knows how to, you got points or, pointers or tips, I haven't, found a, I haven't found a way to be able to, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to finagle my, um, penis through. Uh, I have to go. I have to pull my boxers down inside there. After I, after I unzip, I have to pull my boxers down inside of there and bring my um, shaft. Uh, uh, uh. What have we got here? Uh, over the boxers, underneath of the holster, and use the bathroom there. And then again, finagle it back inside my pants. Um, 
So it's not obviously the easiest thing to do. It's not the most comfortable thing to do. So a lot of times instead I will go to the uh, tool stall where I have a lot more privacy and be able to manipulate my fire in my holster uh, in uh, ways that allows it to be safer and more discreet while I'm using the bathroom. Also, something else is uh, I used to have the belt buckle right here in the front, uh, but I, and I've done this in the past, but I kind of grew away from it for whatever reason. Uh, but uh, now, instead of having the, the belt buckle up on the front, I have it on my right side. Uh, so now it is a little bit easier to get on and off uh, because that belt buckle is not in the way. And I don't have to make sure that each one of these clips are on the each opposite side of it. One thing I will note too is that the pain in the butt sometimes to take this thing off. Uh, I'll show you why. All right, so essentially, right, you pop these two clips. I gotta wiggle that out. Sometimes this piece right here, it actually is loose. I gotta tighten it up a little bit. Hmm. Good reminder: always check your gear. Uh, but this piece sometimes, uh, what happens is it'll get caught on the inside of your pants. The belt will be pressuring right there, and so it's hard to finagle the belt. Uh, out from in between the clip and this piece right here. So uh, that is another thing that's been a pain in the butt. But overall, I'll say I have been a pretty big fan of this holster. Uh, there are still some adjustments I think that might need to be done. Uh, I might put a uh, larger wedge on the back. Currently, I have a medium. I went from nothing, which sucked. It really sucked. Uh, to have in a medium wedge, which helped a whole lot. Uh, there's also, I believe, a large and extra large, which I have. And I'm thinking about swapping them out. So we'll see how that goes. And if I do do that and it does work out better or worse, I'll definitely update you guys accordingly. But I'm probably one of the most open-minded gunners, concealed carriers, and firearms searchers you'll ever meet. I realize that this maybe not, is not the best holster in the world, let alone maybe the best one for me. I do like it a lot, and I do recommend it. Uh, I'm not endor I'm not an endorser. I'm not a paid advertiser. I'm not a um, spokesperson or affiliate. I'm just a guy that spent a decent amount of money. It was like $174 on this holster. Uh, I've been trying out for I think we're coming up on three months now. So, um, but if you have a holster recommendation, let me know. Uh, again, this is for the all right, six hour 3G5. X macro, and I have both the Streamlight TLR7 and I believe the Selvin Alpha 2 uh, because uh, this um, I couldn't find an outside waistband holster that would work with the 7, but I did find one that would work with the 7 Alpha. So I have two different lights for the same gun. Um, probably a good reason to buy a second gun so that light doesn't stay lonely at all. But uh, I want to find more inside the waistband holsters. I want to find more outside the waistband holsters. I want to see what how discreet can I be? This is like the limbo. How low can we go? How discreet can we go? Um, and I want to uh, I want to be able to share that information, that knowledge with other people. So if you have a whole short recommendation that allow me to be more discreet, more concealed, more comfortable, all right, whether outside the waistband or inside the waistband, let me know. And as always, if you guys have any recommendations or any videos you'd like to see done, any reviews, any topics you want me to see me talk on, please put those in the comments below, whether it be about some of the new upcoming gun laws, which I'm going to be doing videos on those. If you have specific questions about those new gun laws that are coming down from Annapolis uh, and how they will affect your rights and how they will affect your daily living, put them in the comments below. I will address those questions, those comments, those concerns in future videos as they come along. So I appreciate you guys. Stay safe. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you all. Stay safe. And remember, don't just train to survive, train to thrive.